Callus gets on the microphone calling Jericho and Omega cockroaches. And maybe this is going to have to be finished, not in a ring, but on the street. And issues a challenge for a street fight in two weeks time on Dynamite in Ontario, California, November 15th. So Omega responds calling him numb nuts and accepts the challenge. But he's bringing Kota Ibushi to the street fight. Callus notes, well, you're still one man short, which means they must be confident Sammy Guevara is going to be back by this time or else Don Callis is going to have to work this street fight. And to combat uh, the fourth man, Jericho says, you know, Hobbs, you're a big man, but I have an even bigger friend. And Callis says, there's no one bigger than Hobbs. Dude, the way Callis just like helped build towards this announcement. Yeah. There's no one bigger than powerhouse Hobbs. No human being is bigger than him. Yeah. Jericho says, not a normal man, but Hobbs is not a giant and out comes Paul white. And uh, this man comes out and dude, he plants himself here and you can see, dude, he's not even like his legs looked like they were at this angle. Like he can't even stand straight. His knees are all wrapped up and Kyle Fletcher just has to run at him and just feed himself for this fist. And he gets knocked out and do Paul white. He does not, move down the ramp. He doesn't do anything here. And this was, I guess, by design to just keep him there. Um, mm. Well, I have to imagine if they're confident enough to put him in. Um, I'm, I'm sure. Match, but um, he can, yeah. he could do so, enough, you know? Um, And I, I'm strangely looking forward to this street fight for one Kota thing. Bushi and Big Show doing uh, double teams together. Yes. Yes. I never thought I I would see the day where Kota Bushi would team up with the Big Show, but only in AEW, right? Um, But the street fight concept essentially kind of uh, almost like teases that this might be like a stadium stampede type of match. And it's plenty of bells and whistles to protect anybody that needs that sort of protection. Um, I would think creatively they would come up with something very interesting for everybody to do. And uh, as and a not, one not time pay-per-view, like you would have thought this is on the pay-per-view, but they're doing it on dynamite. It's, it's true. But I, because it's on TV, I'm, I'm that much more accepting of like having a, a Paul white match in 2023. I do feel kind of bad for the guy, you know, like everybody gets these warm welcomes whenever they come back out of retirement. And Paul white had that one match on the kickoff that everybody hated against QT Marshall. I mean, I guess that wasn't on the kickoff that, but it was a match that nobody wanted to see. Um, comes back here with just even a little bit of a tease from Jericho and nobody wants to see Paul White. I, I think in this setting, there, there's enough around him to make this interesting. And at least some of the, the meaty men sort of like, you know, moments he'll have with Hobbs, I think could have, have a great, very good chance of being entertaining. So this will be his fifth match in AEW. He beat QT Marshall at All Out 2021. Then he, then he worked... Uh, a pair of handicap matches on elevation in September and October of 2021. His last match, his last match was March 30th, 2022 beating Austin green on elevation. So dude, he has never wrestled on TV before. Like, yeah. And, and this is a man with like, you know, 20 plus 30 plus year career at this point, you know, in the industry for a champion, like a guy who's been an actual main eventer, but um, I guess, He's never been that great of a main eventer, which is probably and not I, I that those, those that are negative. I think they are not isolating Paul White here. I think he is more just a symptom of an aspect of AEW that I don't think this audience is clamoring for. Right. Um, now, I think you're much more forgiving for like a TV street fight mm-hmm. and and such. I think that, but um, it, it's just it's overall at the same time. I just think it's it's the totality of all of these different figures that I can make cases for all these individuals. It's, it's the cumulative effect that they are having on the show that you don't want to just be the place that is, you watch this and you come away with all of the stars are the ones that came from the major company. It, it, it is true. At the same time, I mean, AEW has shown an, ab- an ability to reinvent a lot of people so that they're welcome parts of the show where, you know, we talk about Sting. We're talking about Daddy Ass in the main event on a 60th birthday, John, you know? Yeah, we've got a, we've got a few decades to go till we're at that level. So yes. happy birthday to Billy Gunn, 60. You think you'll look like that at 60? I'm, you know, I'm working my way towards it. I think I need, need a few more protein shakes if I have any hope of that. 